after my post-production master's degree i got my degree and i passed it with distinction amazing i was like ah oh, this is it i'll get jobs easily nope. and you still think about the future like okay how do i save money it's fine you know obviously god makes plans in mysterious ways and the mystery was about to come <laughs> yes i took a couple of days off this is, this is a difference right <laughs> When I took a couple of days off in my last intern job, I lost everything. Where here, when I took a couple of days off, I gained everything. I was going to Manchester. But that weekend, the producer of Rulam Sports, his name is Will Brophy, amazing guy. So he goes to me, coming to Manchester to film a video with the one matter. A few days off, I'm in Manchester. I'll come and help. He said, yeah, fine. And then I met JJ properly. At that time, JJ wasn't uploading at all because he was filming a movie called Lady in America. And then basically, then he was like, I want to up upload every single day. So let me put it like, obviously, without revealing the numbers, five videos from JJ was same as... Before we get started with today's podcast, I have a small favor to ask. 95% of you guys watching have not subscribed yet. In order to help me bring on bigger guests, if you've learned anything from any of my podcast episodes, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you and enjoy the podcast. First thing first, I just want to say a huge thank you for taking your time out and coming on the podcast. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, uh, finally, I know you've been like uh, chasing me for like a few months now. Uh, but yeah, it's just because I live in Manchester. And I know you said you were going to come to Manchester as yes. well. But I was like, I didn't want you to, you know... I mean, Hassel firstly, I appreciate it. And I understand how you how busy you are as well. And at the it's Misfits event, luck. even for that, thank you for taking a picture. By the way, I don't know what I was doing in that selfie when I'm sure you probably saw. I took a picture and I was looking at you and then I, I'm not even looking in the proper camera. But nah, it's, it's all good, man. It was uh, uh, it was good to see you at that time as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I did say I would come. So um, it's it's late, but still it's fine. Better than, uh, right. better than not coming. So thank you so nah, much. Um, well, thanks for having me. I want to dive directly first before I even ask. How By is the way, uh, we just opened our... Yes, we have just prior well, to We just bro broken our fast. Uh, it's after iftar time, so... <laughs> just in case all the all the people come back. Just in case people message me saying like, oh, you're not fasting or whatever, so... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, I think that's one thing with people is that people don't know the actual story of what's going on and they will just yeah. start talking. But how is it like working during Ramadan? Like your schedule as editor for... Big creators and everything like uh, that. Yeah, my schedule's changed. Uh, I'm a night owl now. Okay. As in, uh, basically, um, if Sehri, uh, Sohor, it's about 5, 5.30. Until then, I'm working. Because mm -hmm. I can't basically sleep and then wake up again and then sleep again. And all that. And then um, I'll be tired throughout the day. Um, and I feel like I've got sleep apnea or something, <laughs> but I think that's just editors, uh, yeah. uh, like side effects or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'll I'll feel tired throughout the day if I'm like, like waking up in the middle and all that. So what I do is, I I sleep during the day, and I wake up like afternoon time, mm -hmm. and then I work, and then after iftar and everything, then obviously we go prayers, pray and everything, come back. And then I work again until Fajr. So I work throughout the night um, and then sleep. That's crazy. So it's like, yeah, so it's, it's better than like waking up, sleeping, waking up, sleeping again and be tired throughout the day. Uh, and also good thing about my job is like I can, I work from home and uh, uh, and I schedule, well, I do my own scheduling. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's it works out better. For Ramadan it is. Otherwise, my usual schedule is like, obviously, wake up early in the morning yeah. and then work throughout the day and then sleep at night and then obviously just same old, you know, so. Makes sense. I mean, that's your life now. I want to, now let's uh, go quickly into your backstory of like. Pre-Ramadan. Yeah, pre-Ramadan. Also, when you first started, like the, your journey. So, because you're Indian and I'm Indian. Of course. I kind of know how our parents are and they don't see kind of video editing as a career i don't know if that was your case but for me this was not a career they look forward to so yes. how uh, did that all start i'll be honest mine was uh, my parents were supporting oh nice. um so what happened was uh uh when i was doing a levels i was uh working as a volunteer for this community religious channel okay uh, on sky and uh my my dad was like a founder uh, so he was into media at that time so I was just helping out. And since then, uh, I, w I was interested. I was like, okay, this is nice. Like, 
and I can use my creativity and all that. And I was having fun. Mm. You know, so uh and then my dad knew like my talents, my talent like straight away, like when I was 15, 16. So uh he knew like, you know, even if I start this as a career, he knew I'll do well. But the problem is obviously the limit at that time there was limited jobs uh for editors or like anyone in media yeah um that was the only problem but you know what it was i had passion towards it i thought i'll go for it and i did so I, that's when i approached i did further studies did my ba and ma and all that around media so you completed your entire masters and yeah. you did say like you're passionate about it that's one thing like people always say do something you're passionate about it's difficult to find what you're passionate about but you were lucky in that yeah like my parents were supportive mm-hmm. like he want what my dad my dad believes is like you better like it's better to have a amazing life and something that you enjoy but it's better for you to do something that you enjoy than forcefully doing something mm. which you'll get bored of at the end and then you end up like you know hating your life hating your career uh, money is not everything yeah you know um but if you're passionate to the thing is right you can earn money from anything that's true there's money everywhere you know that as well as yep. your your businessman there's money everywhere so when you have passion if you have pa- if if you have passion towards like you know food industry you can Catering. build an amazing restaurant and mm. earn millions from there so i had passion towards media so initially i wanted like post production company and all that that's what my aim was my aim was actually bigger than uh what it is right now yeah. <laughs> uh, but but then again like god just took me to a different direction but still i feel like i met uh my goal yeah you did uh in terms of like career wise um everything else was just add on i love yeah. i love to hear that and i love how you have kind of just embraced the beauty of doing something you love for less money than just doing something which you completely hate and 50 years later when you or 60 years later when you're on your deathbed you just regret your entire life i think yes. a lot of people have that Yeah, of of course as in like for example I'll give you one example right quick example um at the start obviously like you know I'm from Manchester I live in Manchester at that time I had a um job offer it was in media but it was like a assistant like production side mm-hmm. my passion was post production so I wanted to do editing so same time I had job offer in London okay. right less pay but it was post production mm. and in London right So I spoke to my dad and I'm like okay shall I s- just stay in Manchester with you obviously I was living with my parents at that time before I got married so I'll save my money I don't need to pay rent and I'll earn more money here I'll save up more or struggle move to London yeah uh spend all the money I earn into rent because rent is expensive here mm-hmm. and save nothing and my dad was like move to London is more experience there's more experience there are more doors that you can open and that's what i did and that's what i did and then i moved to london first few months obviously everything i used to earn gone gone trend but i used to enjoy the job mm. i used to enjoy so much that i was doing well i was doing like, i got promoted like within i think six months or so wow uh, and then that's how i met jj oh that's how i met jj and then then i became his editor So yeah that's so if I had stayed in Manchester I think I don't know where I would have been like probably completely different uh journey uh maybe uh doing something in production side studio side uh which is not my passion yeah completely different completely different and you know one thing what you done there is that you went outside your comfort zone and yes. they always say that everything good is always outside your comfort yes of course and so I believe that yeah, yeah I believe that and I guess destiny is something you must believe in as well because everything happened in your life got reason. you where you are today and you never regret anything which i can see from what you're talking like everything which you chose i don't know why my phone's on uh, sound but <laughs> everything you chose led you to be here in terms of the struggles you would have in the start because obviously right in the beginning there were not many career in video editing i'm sure when you got started was the creator economy that booming or even just editing kind of industry that big i might be no it wasn't it wasn't uh, right. it wasn't to be honest when i went to uni and or even like when i thought of being in a media industry i never thought youtube mm. 
will be something that people will, ha- will have career yeah like as a youtube editor it's just it, at that time it just it was non existence right <laughs> um th- and struggle wise we'll get into that later on yeah, yeah sure but yeah um i never thought of youtube editing uh, but in fact when i started working for jj yeah. um jj as in ksi um <laughs> for those who don't know i'm sure you know um so yeah at that time jj actually told me not to tell anyone or mention it ah. to anyone that i'm his editor because at that time the creators were supposed to edit themselves themselves ah and if you were supposed to be like some like raw kind of like um rough um production kind of stuff like it was like personal touch yeah. like home videos that's yeah, what yeah, youtube yeah. was supposed to be like you like vlogging on that or like challenges or it was supposed to be like like low uh, quality no low high quality, quality high pr- like yeah low quality like personal touch yeah kind of like vibe so creators used to edit themselves now bro <laughs> now you have studios like this yeah. you have like editors outside <laughs> like five six editors um but yeah now it's completely different now it's like there are more jobs mm. but at that time uh, it was just like either tv or like just tv production it was around the mainstream media even netflix uh, or like amazon prime wasn't really it, it wasn't there i think amazon there. prime wasn't there amazon prime all. wasn't there netflix was was there but it wasn't like big as in was netflix wasn't making their own yeah, shows or anything not. Netflix was, they were just like streaming yep. other movies but yeah um at that time it was like really hard to get get into job in like you know uh media industry have you had some incidents which uh, you were surprised to have back then i'll be honest right <laughs> there is obviously stereotypical like if you're asian you 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 do like law degree or doctor's degree or me- yeah. medicine or whatever um i didn't obviously <laughs> i did post like Uh, for BA, I did uh, film production, okay. and then masters. I did masters in post production. I was, I think, like one or or s- just like I think it was just like couple of Asian. people, Asian people, like from Bame side of, I think, and uh, straight away I f- I felt like I'm minority here, yeah. straight away, right? And then works work placements that I did after my master's degree. it was just like full of obviously um white people white people and i was just like the only asian there and i felt like damn okay did i make a mistake moving into this career like there's not many asians who's doing it then same time i was like oh have i done the right thing and i want to set an example right for example like like for example football right yeah How many Indians or Pakistanis do you know who plays for like big teams? I think I only Apart- know one. Iqbal uh <laughs> yes. Uh, what's his name? Uh, He's in Manchester, right? Manchester United. Manchester United. Yes. Uh yes. Uh, what's, his, what's his name again? I forgot his full name as well, but I I will no, put I, a I know I know him, I right? know his full name. <laughs> <laughs> I know his full name. Um Zidane Iqbal. Zidane, yeah? yes. <laughs> Zidane Iqbal. <laughs> so yeah, so I know, I know his full name. Yeah, so he's a, he's a nice kid. he's there but he's half iraqi and half mm. uh, pakistani so uh, but yeah apart from him you hardly know anyone right yeah so that's why i was like you know what? i probably did a right like you know right thing here right decision um there's hardly any asians in this industry so i'll probably set an example mm. and you did not gonna lie you did yes now but <laughs> at that time bro okay i'll give you an Uh, okay i'll tell you a story right when it comes to struggling or when it comes to struggle yeah after my post production master's degree i got my degree and i i passed it with distinction um amazing i was like ah oh, this is it. like you know um there's going to be like doors open now i've got distinction in master's degree um yeah i'll i'll get jobs easily nope no jobs so I emailed so many people like so many companies emailed so many companies I came to London I was walking around in the rain uh like in Google Maps I was looking at like post production companies I I went in like physically gave them CVs came out like I was that's how at that time that's how limited the jobs were mm-hmm. and I was doing all of that 
for like months and then finally a company came back this company is in media city and i don't want to name the company obviously for obvious reasons what i'm going to say now so they came back they were like okay uh, we would like you to join us as a internship when they say internship they mean like unpaid work for free work for free and i'm like okay that's fine i'll i'll learn new things whatever i was there instead of me learning stuff i was making tea coffee what picking up uh clients lunches and like and all of that like like and then washing dishes and everything as well um and they were like yeah this is just like a runner's job i was like okay fine a runner's job yeah this is what you're supposed to do yeah you were supposed to like um yeah so you're supposed to kind of like show them that you're dedicated you want to be in this industry and then sometimes like there's like one hour where you sit down and you just watch the editors that's it you just shadow work like watching them and sometimes like i was like when i was watching them i was like i know how to do this better mm. but obviously they're not going to give me any chance for me to like showcase my skills yeah but they were like making me whatever Okay, I was there for a few months and all that, yeah. I was and they they told me, okay, the next assistant job when the vac- when when there's job available, they'll give me the job. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I did that. I was like good for the CV. I'll put in the CV. You've probably seen my CV. Yeah. You've probably seen <laughs> who that company is. Um it's good for the CV or whatever. And then um what happened was I think the CEO's friend's son who just finished his uh GCSEs and he's in A levels right now or he doesn't want to do A levels so he's like 8 or 17 or 16, 16 17 16 years old yeah 17 right okay so suddenly he came along and he was doing same thing as me like making tea and all that as well now i'm like okay i'm here with my master's degree and this guy is here just like doing A levels okay we're in the same position right now then i was like that's a bit odd Okay whatever that's fine. Uh and I remember one week where I wasn't feeling well or I think I wanted to come to London to hand out CVs. This is volunteer work anyway so I told them okay I'm not coming for a few days then I'll come after because it's a volunteer's work mm. I can do whatever like yeah. I can just like you know take days off. I uh, when like, you want to work. Yeah I don't need to give them advance notice or anything but I did give them advance notice right? So I told them a day before okay I I'm not coming for a few days. Um I didn't see like you know like I didn't tell them why. I just said I, I can't come for a few days. Uh, I've got a few things to do whatever. And then cuz I to be honest I can't afford I can't afford being there every single day. How long free. did you stay there for? I think it was almost it was like a few months unpaid few yeah, months unpaid. unpaid. And um yeah so I was handing out CVs and everything and I came back and everyone was normal so i was still like you know making tea and all that yeah and i saw this like the kid who was making tea with me he's not doing that anymore he's promoted I'm like what's going on so basically because his dad is friend of the ceo mm-hmm. they gave him the assistant job assistant editing job with zero skills and that's when i felt like i felt racism there i felt racism there bro straight away and cuz i not just that like um, in editing suite they were like watching a video or something it was low quality video or something and someone said like oh this low quality video look like looks like a isis type of video and then turned around looked at me and goes no offense oh like what what is that and like you know why are you saying that like what do you mean no offense like, i don't care i like i find that funny as well but what do you mean no offense <laughs> bro i felt like racism there like it's obviously it's not open obvious racism mm. but you you know you know what i mean like yeah. with master's degree you're there you got skills you have experience not just degree like i said you know like bef- when i was 15 um i started working for uh your dad community tv channel for voluntarily i was working there as well so i had like work experience and everything right 
and uh, yeah, so I was like, and then they hire someone because they know the dad or whatever. So that, that how's that fair? Did that incident demotivate you to for that career? Yeah, it did. It did. Um, so after that, I left. Right, I was like, I I spoke to them. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm upset. I was working here, like for free, before this, like you know, boy came in a few months before the, the boy came in, and he just came recently, yeah, and then I took a few days off. You could have just called me saying, "Oh, Mo, come back," you know, you got promoted, yeah. or like, "Oh, we got, you know, we can fill the job for you." Instead of saying that, you just given it to this guy where he just came recently and he's can no experience, no skills. And they just give him the job. Yeah, they had no nothing to say. But I guess no. that whole incident happened, and now you must be thinking back, like, damn. If I had got that job again, <laughs> I would have been somewhere else. So a different journey. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. So after that happened, did you find another job, or was that the next job in the company where? So after that, I applied. Um, on few web websites where they give out freelance jobs, okay. like one-off jobs. Yeah. So I thought, you know, let me just make a portfolio. Uh, so after that, I think, you know, after that it was fine. Like I was getting a job a week somewhere okay. like uh, X Factor. I'm a, like assistant runner there. Or like, even there it's like, <laughs> it's not amazing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? Uh, you, you're just there like standing in one place, like guiding people where to go to audition and whatever. That was X Factor. And then uh, I had like a few days job at this game show um, uh, in Doc 10, Media City. So I was doing some work there. So it was like on and off, on and off. But then again, it was all like freelance and it was just like uh, entry level jobs. And But it wasn't, it wasn't something that I wanted to do. Like obviously, like I said, my passion was editing, post-production. Mainly I wanted to edit like, for match of the day, or like sports channels, um, that's what the main uh, aim was. Um, so that was the aim, and yeah. then what led you to go in? The, I mean, carry on talking if you have more to add. But then, what led you to kind of entire different route of editing when uh, KSI approached you as well? So this is what happened, right? Okay, so that's what I was doing. Whilst I was doing like you know this freelance job here and there, same time, obviously, I need uh, I need to earn money to yeah. live off, right? Um, I, I can easily could have just asked my parents to give me money or whatever. They did help me a lot as well, but at the same time, I wanted to, you know, stand up on my own feet. Yeah. Uh, so I was doing pizza deliveries. <laughs> a guy with a master's doing pizza deliveries. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, you gotta grind, bro. Like you have that's to. That's hustling. That's a real hustler. Of course, most people would be kind of they have an ego and they'll be not want to go in that oh i know some people right now you know i know some people right? some of my friends right now i know some people who's got a degree but they don't want to work any entry level jobs mm -hmm. or anything um they're waiting for the right job i'm like no that's not gonna happen you have to just start, start somewhere somewhere yeah um and i did that like you know um it kind of valued my life even more yeah. in my opinion um, so yeah, in, like master's degree, I'm doing like runner's job. I'm making tea, coffee, delivering pizzas and all that. Yeah, whilst having a master's degree, uh, but it's fine. I don't like. And you know. need that humility if you want to be successful, because things can go wrong any day of your life. But if you don't have that humility within you, then it's really hard. Because with that ego, then you're gonna just be like, no, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do this. And I think that kind of still helped me throughout my life mm. because even now I'm thirty. Uh, I do all nighters. I I work hours, hours, and uh, and I don't feel like oh I'm doing too much, or whatever. Yeah. Because that mentality is still in my head. Because back in the day, I used to do worse. Yeah. Like you know, uh, now I'm in comfort of my own house, so I shouldn't be lazy. Yeah. I should work harder. So like not just editing, I want to get into like other stuff as well, like passive income. I want to get into other businesses as well. So. Uh, yeah, that kind of like motivated me. So what happened at that time is like, like I said, I had job offer from Doc Ten um, at that time uh, to be like you know the entry level jobs that I was doing. Yep. 
so basically similar role like production assistant uh uh to work in Manchester okay uh but it was like zero hour contract though so, so you it was kicked out any time basically yeah but then they were they guaranteed like they told me like uh, there are so many jobs there's so many things going on so it's never the case so he's, you're going to feel like it's permanent anyway but it was exciting yeah so like you know citizen khan they they used to film there's a skit like sketch oh ah, okay uh they filmed it there match of the day and all that they filmed it there so it was like there was job was going on anyway so so i ha- so i was like either be assistant production and then same time i had a job offer from the company called endemol okay based in shepherd's bush in london white city yes Near the westfield white city right yes and uh, the job was basically assistant junior editor okay premier pro for like bang on tick tick and uh, uh they called me for a trial i went for a trial for a day travel from manchester obviously in the morning stayed the interview after interview they gave me something to edit and this is where i was like time to shine i was working in, in that like well i was intern interning in that company where they didn't let me do anything but here they given me the computer now they given me the footage and they are they asking me to edit something or like time to shine and i did it and i edited and uh it was basically they had three channels mm. and this was basically a digital company endemol but this was like digi- endemol beyond was within endemol endemol beyond they were looking after youtube channels okay so this was something new as well right so they had three channels at that time it was like a beauty channel and then there was a gaming channel called called legends of gaming and then it was a uh, rulum sports I think Rulam Sports I remember. Yes. That's where KSI done it. Rulam with Sports it. where the KSI was the talent. Legends of Gaming was like where uh Deji, Roto Show, uh, Cal Freezy, Dan TDM, Ali A, all of these guys were talent for Legends of Gaming. Right? So this was like okay, I like sports. I like gaming. And it's perfect. I like this. And uh, I edited it like uh in one day the whole episode I edited that and um, and they were like I said goodbye to them and all that and they were like they'll get back to me and whilst I was like going to train station I got a phone call saying yeah we give you the job I was like that was quick <laughs> I was like yes when when can I start they were like we can start next week and I'm like shit <laughs> I was like okay now I need to move from Manchester to London, London. find a place find uh, somewhere to live uh gather everything whatever like m- get you know mentally i need to be ready right the pay wasn't amazing it was like junior editing role right it wasn't amazing but i knew if i lived in london i would like you know spend all my money towards the rent then that's when i spoke to my dad and my dad was like you know that's something you love to do it's a junior editing role you can progress become mm-hmm. an editor senior editor uh, whatever or stay there or you stay in Manchester do your assistant production where it's nothing to do with editing all you're going to be doing is just like uh well pre 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 production paperwork or no it'll be just be just basically like uh be there throughout the filming whatever it will be nothing to do with editing basically yeah mm. which i don't like yeah Yeah. You're, you're an editor person. Just yeah. love that computer and that Premiere Pro. I like staying in one place and <laughs> uh, edits. Yeah. Um so I was like, okay, fine. Um straight to I was living with my uncle in London for a couple of weeks. Um and he helped me a lot as well. So until I find my own place, then I found my own place. It was like a small tiny room. It was like 700 pounds a month. Wow. Like a tiny room in Shepherd's Bush. London is a Yeah, place. 700 pounds a month, like tiny as in like this half half of this. Wow. Right? And shared bathroom and everything. I was like, okay, that doesn't matter. It's fine. I used to enjoy the work. And then the best thing about Endemol was it was diverse. So my manager, the mom of boss was Indian. Um like the fellow editors that I was working with like one of them were Indian one of them were like from 
uh, black background. It was like the the BAME, like you know, background. It was diverse. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it, and they were all like all friendly. I felt like. I was back in uni for some reason. It was like they were all like kind of similar age. They were all like friendly. They were like, you know, we used to like hang around, go out, everything. We, used to, I used to love it. I loved it. Like, and them all like you know, if, if they're watching right now, I'm telling you, like it was the best place I worked. That's that's crazy. And they were like so nice to me and everything. Um, it was like calm, like you know, there was no pressure. Although there was deadlines, like tight deadlines. I never felt pressure. I didn't mind working overtime. I didn't mind working till late, 12, 1, 2. I didn't mind at all because I used to enjoy it. Like they were like my friends more than anything. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that's when I was like, I made the right decision. I'm loving this life now. All right. Then again, then obviously, then you still think about the future. Like, okay, how do I save money? Mm. Like, what can I do and all that? It's fine. You know, obviously. God makes plans in uh, mysterious ways. Yes, definitely. And uh, and the mystery was about to come. <laughs> yes. So I took a couple of days off. This is this is a difference, right? <laughs> when I took a couple of days off in my last oh, intern job. job, I lost everything. Where here, when I took a couple of days off, I gained everything. So I took a couple of days off. I was going to Manchester, and uh, this was before Christmas. And uh, for that weekend, the producer of Rulam Sports, um, his name is Will Brophy, uh, amazing guy. So he goes to me, we're coming to Manchester to film a video with the one Mata, oh, Manchester yes. United player, right? I was like, oh my God, I'm a huge United fan, so I was like, Damn, and Juan Mata was my favorite. Like, still is my favorite player. He's a nice, down to earth guy. I was like, bro, I know I've got my like you know a few days off. I'm in Manchester. I'll come and help. Uh, like, I don't mind. I'll come and help, like for free or whatever. Like, obviously, I just said I'll come and help. Yeah, he said, yeah, fine, just tag along. So JJ came to Manchester. Uh, Will came Manchester, Juan Mata was there and I went there and I was helping them out filming and then I met JJ properly at that time and then uh, they were like, oh, you know Manchester, uh, what was there to do at night? I was like, listen, I don't I don't go clubbing or whatever. So I, maximum I do is like go shisha place and just chill. Yeah. <laughs> just chill there, <laughs> play FIFA or something, like, you know, have mojito or whatever, like have tea, just you know, chill with my friends. And I said, yeah, there's a place, um, like, a, like a nice, like exclusive, really like shisha place. And they have like FIFA and everything. I'm going to go there. If And then he was like, JJ was like, yeah, perfect. Like, let's go. And at that night, like we were chilling, like we were like playing FIFA, uh, like, you know, um, there's pictures as well. I can see. Yeah, I've, se- I've seen those pictures. I've yeah. seen where it's you, Quan Mata, um, uh, JJ's there and then three other players and then also the guy who's fighting on the next Misfit card I know his name J- JMX JMX that's yes, it he yes. was there as JMX well. was in that JMX picture was as well. there as well so yeah so yeah we chilled and everything we just like you know uh, talking and uh, at that time JJ wasn't applauding at all because he was filming a movie called Lady in America yes <laughs> and uh, we remember that movie and and uh, and also he was like he edits himself right obviously he doesn't have time mm. he wants to upload but he was the only one from sideman who wasn't uploading mm. and fans wanted him to upload and then what happened was like randomly he messaged me saying i got proper proposition for you um you want to be my editor <laughs> and i'm like it was my, my friends pranking me or something yeah like he he wants like hold on, J- is it is this JJ? I messaged my producer, is this him? Is this his number? And he was like, yeah, he was asking for your number. I was like, damn, okay. And then we set up a, a Skype call at that time, not Zoom. No Zoom, Zoom Skype. Wasn't there. Yeah, uh, probably was there. I still uh, use Skype, by the way. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> like to be honest, all the sidemen used to use Skype at that time. Wow. Now they all use Discord. Yeah. But at that time, when I was there, like you know, Mini Winter, 
Jay's, you know, that we all had like Skype, like, you know, um, Zerka, Josh and all that. We all had Skype at that time. So we had a Skype meeting and then he was like, I'll give, I'll pay you this much per edit. So I was like, okay. <laughs> wow. All right. Okay. Not bad. I <laughs> like, cool. Um, and then basically, then he was like, I want to up- upload every single day. So let me put it like, obviously, without revealing the numbers, his three videos equal to, no, actually, at that time, yeah, at that time, it was like five videos, right? Five videos from JJ was same as a month's salary. For your job you had. Yeah. At that time, I was like, yeah, fine. And he wanted to upload every single day. So now this is where it gets tricky, right? I don't want to leave Endemol. There is so much for me. Mm. And JJ's is still freelance, right? So what I used to do is like, I used to work for Endemol late, like six, seven, and come back and then edit for JJ. Every day used to be like this. And no sleep. Oh, I wow. Used to, every single day, I used to work for Endemol, JJ, Endemol, JJ. How long did you keep Endemol, doing JJ. this? Bro, I did this for like, I think six, seven months. Six, seven months constantly. Good. I did that with that. And that's when um, I, I'm healthy right now. I'm chubby right now. At that time, I was skinny. I lost a lot of weight at that time. Due to lack of sleep, I guess. Not just that. Like I had the schedule as well. I used to, I, I used to go gym in the morning. Um, on It was like on the way to Endemo. So I used to go gym, Endemo, and work and all that. So I don't used to eat much. Mm. And he he got me in, like, into depression at that time because the uh, same year I was getting married. Oh, so I'm wow. like, okay, I'm getting married in a few months' time. I'm here like working, 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 working. And this is when I realized money is not everything, right? I was like, okay, I need to move back to Manchester now. So I've, I've stayed in Endemol for one year. I'm grateful they did everything they can. With JJ still is um, freelance, but that's when I started getting uh, messages and calls from Miniminta, Ali A, and a few other clients, or a few other YouTubers. They were like, they kind of seen the, I feel like they, they kind of seen the, um, let's say. Style of editing? Not style. I think at that time it was obviously, you're not supposed to have an, have an editor, right? So after the seeing JJ, they were, they were like, oh shit, we can do it as well. Yeah, free of so much time. Yeah. So they asked me as well. So I was working with Miniminter and JJ and Endemol. <laughs> and then it's like, then Ali wait, asked wait, wait. me. So you carried on working at. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's when I, I can't like keep up. Yeah. Right. I can't keep up. So I left Endemol. Amazing guys. Amazing. Like, you know, like. Place I'm to work at. Forever grateful. Uh, I moved back to Manchester. And I'm, I'm then since then I've been doing it full time. Wow. JJ, Mini Winter, and then and then when Sidemen came along, then with Sidemen. Now I do Sidemen, uh, Reacts channel. So I used to do like main channel and all that as well. Now they have like proper team in structure mm. where there's like editors for Reacts, editors for this. And all. So I do JJ's uh, and this. And with JJ, I started off as an editor. Now I'm like a channel manager or something because I upload for him. I come up with ideas, do everything. Like I, uh, I take care of the thumbnail, uh, I take care of the graphics guy or whatever. Like I do everything for him. All JJ does is like, you know, records and sends. I even provide the batches or things for him to record, or things for him to react and everything. So it's like a lot of diff- love, love changed. He's g- he's given me more trust now. Yeah, uh, okay. You know, as, a, as, as, a, as an editor, you'd expect like changes from your clients. Yep. But with JJ, is like, I upload. I edit, I upload. Wow. He doesn't, I don't think he even watches <laughs> his own channel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy how your chemistry between you and him yes. throughout the ch- journey as well. Because I, I feel like a lot of people are just like, whenever there's something with editing, like Mo's going to do this, Mo's going to do that. And they love you as his editor as well. And finding a style for a creator, you found like, I don't know how you do it as an editor, but you know like, this is KSI's kind of, kind of vibe. This is Miniminter's vibe. How do, how do you come up with that kind of style for that creator? Depends on their character. 
depends on their body language. Um, wow. If I have a so if I if I have a like a YouTuber who's like I don't know how to say it, whose personality is flat, like what's up guys? It's me, uh, Mo Said, and today I'm doing. I can't do much with this. Yeah, I can't. I can't do zoom ins and out or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I can't do. Like with JJ, yeah. What's up, guys? It's me, JJ, blah blah. And then he's like, like his energy goes up and down, up and down, and then he laughs in the middle and everything. I can be more creative with this. It depends on someone's character. Yes, makes right? sense. Right, but at the start when I started working for JJ, I had to adapt his style. Mm-hmm. When I say adapt his style, it was. Let's say I've been editing like professionally, uh, like similar to mainstream media, and then JJ wants me to edit for him. Now I have to adapt his, uh, let's say, personality. He is like a rough, kind of like low quality Sony Vegas Pro type quality. Uh, yeah, it's kind of it's, it's like going backwards. It was quite difficult. Yeah, it was quite difficult. Like you know the cuts. Like in Endemol, my Edit producer was so strict. He was like, "There shouldn't be single shake." It was like, mm. single shake is like add stabilizer. Wow. There shouldn't be shake. Like to camera changing, it was like no, it was a bit too fast. It was, should be like a second extra. It was like so strict. With JJ, <laughs> <Doesn't matter. laughs> do whatever you want. He wants more like low quality, and people loved it. Yeah. Like shaky camera and all that came from that. Like you know, at that time. If you look at YouTube or people don't used to use shaky camera effects and all that back in the day, I actually started that from JJ. Yeah, and then now I see Every everyone week. using it as a style. Now it became a style now. Yeah. It became a YouTube style. It's weird. I, I like I find it like fascinating. I mean, it is because I think when it was twenty fifteen, I think or twenty yes. twenty fifteen when you started working yeah. with uh, KSI and. I was watching him from Gujan Daniel days. I don't know if you know. Yes, that. yes, yes. I came after. You came just after that, just right? After. Yes. And I feel like since you started editing, is the time I started watching. So I literally have seen the way you have kind of adapted his style. And adapted then slowly. I'm bringing now is like kind of like calmed. Yes. Like because you know what? When I you say character, his age. <laughs> so not just age. When I say character, okay. Back in the day, it was JJ was wild and yeah. he was like you know. He was being JJ yeah. himself, right? At that time, I don't think he's he needed to worry about brands or companies mm. or anything that he's linked with. Now he's got so many things going on with yeah. Misfits, uh, with Prime, Prime, with like his uh, record label, uh, with other brands that he's uh, associated with, like he's associated with uh, Adidas. Yes. Uh, so obviously he needs to be more mature. Yeah. <laughs> and the editing kind of works with his style. Yeah. Right. I don't go over the top anymore. Uh, I think you do a perfect job. It's like where yeah. it needs to be. Yeah. So I don't like, you know, there are some other um, like YouTubers. When I see their videos, they're like, there are subtitles. There's like graphics coming from here. And I can do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do it because not because I can't do it. I don't do it to. because I don't need to do it. Because mm. cause I know the fans will be like, they'll feel a bit unsettled. They'll be like, yeah. okay, that's it's a bit different now. So kind of adapting uh, to his energy, to his uh, I like character. that so much. And seven years working with him. <laughs> if you see the videos like seven years ago to now, bro, big it's difference. big difference. Does your parents know how big, like, as in what you do now is even compared to like, because my parents completely don't know what I do, like with YouTube, this and that. Do they have any um, idea? My, they, they do. I don't think... <sighs> Like for example, like my brother, right? He watches KSI. He watches. He knows me properly. Until I took him to boxing with me, mm. when he saw like a bunch of people taking pictures with me, and like you know, I was getting stopped everywhere. That's when he was like, you know, I didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't realize it was this big a deal. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I don't think our parents. So <laughs> I don't think my parents will know exactly until they see me in action. Yeah. But they know, like, and you know, I'm doing good. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So, uh, and I I wish you all the best going forward as well from here. And is your f- uh, is your son a fan of KSI or any of? He's them? he's only four years old. Oh, he's only four <laughs> years. So he yeah, right now is not the yeah, best time to yeah. <laughs> watch him. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, hopefully, when he grows up, uh, 
the videos are more <laughs> family friendly. <laughs> yes, because that's guess. what it's turning into, bro. Like yeah. when I started, it was something else. Now Jay is a lot mature. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, feel like it's not. It's more to like a, uh, yeah, cater for like bigger audience as well, younger audience as well. Definitely. Nowadays, um, yeah, compared to how it was before. Yeah, definitely. And how was the transition from? Well, uh, the question which uh, about. You know the web portfolio we, which you had, where you had the sci-fi uh, films, and your uh, dream was to become a senior sports editor in five years' time. Is that still alive or changed completely? Yeah, it's not alive anymore. So how did was how was the transition from a job to a business now? Because after you started working for yourself and you left the job, it's a complete different lifestyle, and people don't understand that as well. I feel like my master's degree kind of helped me. Mm. Um, because masters, okay, like BA is like, okay, you you'll be going to lectures and all that. You're still somehow like you know, uh, like you know, following the instructions. But masters, they left you to it, like, yeah. and I had to make my own deadline, own schedule, and everything. I think that kind of helped me towards my business. Um, as in now, like you know, how to handle different clients, how to schedule, um, how to do this, that, like you know, I'm my own boss. Mm. Uh, that doesn't mean. I kind of gives me more responsibilities kind of like it's harder to be your harder, own boss yeah it's harder to be my own boss because I need to make my own time I need to yeah. make my own schedule same time balance it with family with friends with business everything so um but same time I feel like have having your own schedule made uh kind of gives you more f- like freedom yeah freedom Compared to, uh, like, obviously... Going to a job. Going to a job, let's say, I can't... Like, I want to go on a holiday. I can't do that because, obviously, you have to submit uh, leave and all of that. With this, with my business, I can go on a holiday and I can work from there as well. Yeah. So, these kind of things, there are advantages. Yes, it is harder. But at the same time, I like it because I have more advantage. mm I am stating obvious, to be honest. No, it's true because <laughs> I feel like many people think having a lifestyle of being your own boss is easy, but they don't understand how disciplined you need to be, how stressful it can be sometimes. Because in a job, it's like from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock, then you're gone, you can enjoy your life. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're your own boss, 24 hours, it's like constantly things are going in your head, things are going in your head, and sometimes it's draining as well. Let's give an example, yeah. For example, <laughs> when I have a PT yeah. for a gym, Right, I'm more like you know dedicated because I have a PT and yeah. he'll be like he'll make sure I work out. Yes. Yeah, leave it to myself. It'll be hard for me Very to hard. go to the gym and work out mm. because obviously there's no one for me like there's no one controlling me. So this is same as business as well. Yeah, right. Unless you have a a manager, hire a manager. That's <laughs> why I'd say, or I have hire an assistant. Who look after your schedule, or a manager who makes sure that you follow uh, the schedule yourself. So this is like your own boss, but same time there's there's people who are like kind of like controlling your schedule. Yeah, and right? I think that that you can do once you grow in your journey as well, when you're able to afford that. And it it does get yes. easier, but being your own boss, even to become your own boss, is so much difficult. Yeah, and uh, that's the kind of one thing. Have you are you into kind of? Self improvement. Have you? Do you read usually to kind of upgrade your mindset, or you're just a person who learns from life experiences? I pray, obviously. That's uh, the biggest self improvement. <laughs> I'm massive. Um, I'm telling, like you know, like all like when people say like do yoga and all that, but I feel like uh, namaz itself, like praying itself, is a is a massive aspect in life uh, towards success, um, towards men- mental health. Uh, the connection that you'll have to yourself and towards you uh, and Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is next level. Like, it helped me towards my downfalls. It helped me towards, like, every time there's, like, struggle in my life, prayers help me a lot. So the, I say, like, prayers itself is better than any book mm-hmm. or any yoga or any mental uh, exercises that they they give you i think prayer is like a type of meditation where of course where of course. you're just at peace and just basically being with yourself being with your own thoughts and being with the divine 
mighty. It's just between you and Allah. That's yeah. it. It's just you and your God. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I respect that a lot as well because most people think the only way to improve yourself is through books, but there are other aspects of life as well which they don't look at. I, I wanted to quickly. But ask, nothing against books, though. Yeah, no, I mean, nothing I love against. books. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm into books. I, well, I'm not the because in my religion, I'm, I say my religion, but in Hinduism, I I go to the temple, but. The reason why I respect um, Islam a lot is because you guys every day would pray like five times. The thing is, uh, when you when you said about uh, you know like you know self discipline, yeah. Islam teaches that mm. like five I, times, yes, I, the I, prayers five times a day, every single day. Like to follow that, that's self discipline itself. Yes, fasting, there's system to it. That's self discipline, self awareness, patience. It teaches you a lot. Yes. So I would actually say, from your previous question, like you know how you how I handle my business and everything, Islam plays a massive part. That, that's actually a banging way to kind of put it as well, because you're really right. And I heard the same thing from another fellow guest I had on the podcast as well about how it's like life. It teaches you how to live life and the of aspects course. of life, and I love that a lot. Um, I was just showing you my books, but these are the books I read, but they. They haven't taught me as much as how much I've learned from life and just like praying and those things as well. Also, one thing I wanted to ask was the incident between you and Joe Weller because that was uh. completely out of nowhere, right? If things went down, if things went down, okay, would you have ever stepped in the ring with him? Ever? I, w- I would have. You would have? Yeah. As yes. in, if JJ given me his blessings. <laughs> if he trained you, you would have. If he ever. trained me... Um, Man, I'd, I'll be honest. I don't know what happened at that time. Um, I was watching it. I he was wasn't watching. supposed to be there. Yeah, he wasn't invited. He was. He's not. He's not keen with misfits. Yeah, like he doesn't like misfits and some misfits events. Event and why would you come and sabotage everything and try to have attention to yourself? Mm-hmm. That is not a eth- ethically. That's bad. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Um. Yeah, I don't know why he was there. He was there just to create drama. I mean, we all could and see that uh, from the. Uh, yeah, and he. <laughs> I I made a video about this anyway, but yeah, he. I think he just didn't like me from <laughs> the retweets and tweets yes. that I did uh, previously. But then again, listen, the when it comes to boxing and bands and all that, you should just handle take all of this. You know, like you shouldn't you shouldn't be emotional about it. Yeah. But he got emotional on that day. I mean, thank you for all these amazing things. I just want to get to the last part of today's podcast, and that is a quick would you rather. And then we also want to try some Indian snacks. Yeah, As two go. Indians, I'm going to rate. I want to I see how his taste buds are and what he likes. But before that, <laughs> I just have a few questions. So the first one is, would you rather take... It's f- The first three are going to be finance questions to test your finance ability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then... Which will be really, really bad. <laughs> so it, it's simple. Would you rather take one pound today or one pound tomorrow and why? It's a tricky question. One pound today. Why? Uh, you don't know the future of tomorrow. I can make one pound into two pounds today. That's close and th- that's a correct answer in your own way as well. And tomorrow the inflation could mean that one pound is less than what it's valued tomorrow. So that was the kind of finance question. Okay. <laughs> you went a bit too techn- technical. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, that's why I, 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 whatever your answer is probably right. Okay. The next question is, not really a finance, but would you, would you rather take 30 million pounds today or 30 million loyal friends? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I'll take 30 million today. Okay. Um, and I'm okay with like five loyal friends. Ah, now he 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 my counter. If you took thirty million loyal friends and you asked each one of them for two pounds, you would have sixty million pounds on the same day as well. Technically, damn. <laughs> well, that that it was a funny trick question, but the it next is a, it is a trick question mm-hmm. about who's got thirty million. Yeah, true. And having thirty million subscribers is hard. So who will even have thirty million uh, friends? Next question is the last finance question is. Would you take a million pound today or a penny that doubles every day for the next 30, year, uh, 30 days? So a million pound today or a penny that doubles every day for the next 30 days? Penny that doubles every day for the next 30 days. Okay, the math needs to come here now. 
just 30 days and after that it just stops yeah after that it stops <sighs> million today a penny or penny that doubles a penny that doubles yeah a million today <laughs> if you chose the penny it would have been 5 million on the 30th day how because if it doubles so 1p to 2p 2 to 4 4 to 8 and then it compounds quickly so on the 15th day it would be almost like 100 and then after that it would be uh, double of 100 200 is 200 and then 400, 400 and then 800, 800 and then double 1600 then yeah 3200 6400 yeah. <laughs> but a million is a million, million. anyway <laughs> so you missed out 5 million on that question yeah, that's when I said like maths coming away, but then when you when you said penny, I was like, no way it's gonna turn into a million. <laughs> I mean, many people think that as well. So, but at the end of the day, a million is a million anyway. If, even if you choose a million, the next. To be honest, you don't know, man. If I'm gonna be alive tomorrow or not, so I'd rather take million now. Live in the present. Yeah. yeah. Um. The next questions are not finance based. These are simple ones. Would you leave the sideman if Mr. Beast came knocking on your door to become his it? No. Uh, it's not just that like there's been i'm i'm in this editing discount uh, discord group right uh there's been jobs from mr beast wow. but it's like full-time kind of jobs mm. um i could have easily applied if i wanted to but no obviously not <laughs> i uh, love that as well um the next question is apart from ksi who else would you like to edit videos for ever apart from ksi um, I would, <laughs> I would say, um, apart from KSI, I would say Mr. Beast, uh, if he's not KSI, or I would say Logan Paul. Ah, Logan Paul, yeah. If he's not KSI. Do you, do you love but the I way they have I wouldn't kind of squash their beef yeah, and then course, become I loved friends? Yeah, I love that. I yeah. just find it so, like... Bromance kind of wives. Loved it. <laughs> well, they were meant to. <laughs> meant to be. They, they, they're meant for each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can say that. It's just the UK version <laughs> and the US version. That's yeah. it. <coughs> the next question is, uh, I don't know if you want to answer, but it's like, would you rather box Joella or Kavos? Uh, Kavos. I hate Kavos more. You hate Kavos. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate anyone, okay? Joella. <sighs> it was just a... He he's actually a nice mm. guy, mm. right? He's actually a nice guy. I like I yeah, beef happened there and then whatever. But Joel is okay. Yeah. Compared to Kavos, Kavos is just negativity. I just that like you know like I don't hate him as well. I don't hate you, Kavos. But if he's like rather Joel or Kavos, Kavos makes sense. And the next one is before we end the podcast. I mean, no, before we end, we're gonna. Get some snacks. So the part of the four questions are finished, by the way. Mm -hmm. the, those were the, okay. the would you rather questions. And you answered it really well. To be honest, in this podcast, the amount of backstory you have given and your kind of struggles you had prior to even meeting KSI. Yeah. It's crazy to think. Because most people see you as a guy who edits for KSI and they're like, oh shit, this guy edits for KSI. Yeah, I got lucky. Blah, blah, yeah, easy, but they easy, don't yeah. see the struggles come through. Thank you so much, Mo, for joining me on this episode. My and pleasure. Thanks for having me. It, it it means a lot and guys if you don't know who Mo is I'm sure if you're watching me you know I'm a KSI fan and I'm a Mo fan so if you don't know who he is check out all his Twitter, YouTube everything link will be in the description and I will see you guys in the next podcast take care and peace Peace